And we're live. Okay. Hey, everyone. Uh, I know no one's in here yet, but people are going to be joining. Um, and hopefully a lot of people join for this one uh, because it is something that is actually very serious to talk about. Uh, nothing to be taken lightly or lightheartedly and something that needs to be addressed, um, something that needs to be discussed, and something that needs to be elaborated upon uh, if you didn't see uh, what happened. Um, so for those of you who are joining, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so basically, if you did not see the news yesterday, um, or it was announced in the news yesterday, but... Um, apparently it happened a few days ago, or at least a week ago, and the news didn't officially report on it until yesterday. But if you don't know, um, the co-creator of Spider-Man, Steve Ditko, passed away, sadly, at the age of 90, I believe. And I, I don't think he, uh, from what I'm, I'm reading, I still need to read the full, um, you know, article about what happened, how it happened, but from what, from what, what I'm getting... Um, and yes, awesome uh, gigs, co-creator co of Doctor Strange as well, of course. Um, huge respect to Doctor Strange. I love Doctor Strange. Um, but basically, <coughs> he basically um, uh, sadly passed away. Um, I believe with um, in like in a in a warm environment, no nothing you know stressful or anything uh, was on uh, Steve or anything like that. I think he passed away in a in a peaceful manner. Um, with people who loved him, all of his fans like us, and just his family that love him as 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 much more than we do. Um, so uh, sadly, um, if you've all seen that, we've all been you know grieving. Sadly, it's it's a sad time, and I'm you know very upset myself. And and it's it's just a really tragic thing to have happen. I I say this with full you know intent. And honesty is that I love Steve Ditko when I grew up on his comics from the 60s when he first created Spider-Man. I'm not, you know, over how old, you know, people grew up from the 60s. I mean, I read the comics from the 60s because of how much I love Spider-Man. I've read almost all the, the classic Spidey comics. I know all of his amazing artwork that he's done, all the, the great stories that he was able to do with Stan Lee back in the past. And, you know, he, it's, it's a really sad thing that has happened. And it's just, it's taken its toll on a lot of people. A lot of people are, are inspired by Steve Ditko's work, what he's done for Spider-Man, because he, how he co-created the character, the stories that he made, what's, what this character means to people, and of course, Doctor Strange too, and um, other characters, like I believe The Question. Um, but just mainly for this character that we all love so much and that the world loves so much is Spider-Man. And how he means a lot to so many people and how he means the world to me, to you guys, to everyone. And it's just, it's a really sad, you know, day for, for fans of Steve and for the fans of Spider-Man and specifically for, you know, what's what's going on here. Um, and, you know, what I uh, did on Twitter is something that I see now in retrospect is a bit um, disrespectful. Um, although I just want to say up front now uh, before uh, I get into it, uh, Gyrarian says, why apologize? You'll find out why. Uh, if you're on Twitter, if you use Twitter, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, but basically, what uh, happened is that, you know, Steve passed away sadly. And I posted a tweet, actually, if you saw what I uh, posted, um, about like an hour after I found out that he passed away. I just, you know, wanted to, you know, as you can see now, my voice from what I'm, how I'm feeling right now, just hopefully through seeing it, I'm kind of a little bit still heartbroken about it, still very upset about it. But basically, I put out a tweet yesterday um, honoring Steve, sharing my love for Steve, sharing what I believe he means for the world and how he has shaped the comic industry forever and has inspired not just fans of comics, but the world with the great characters that he made, specifically with Spider-Man. And I put out a tweet saying, Steve Ditko was more than just an artist and a writer. He was a hero. He inspired the world with his work helping create one of the greatest superheroes ever made and quite possibly the greatest fictional character of all time. I'll miss you, Steve. 
thank you for everything. And I posted four pictures on there, uh, two of Steve working, uh, one of a comic book panel of Steve. Uh, and the fourth one is like one of the famous comic book panels. He wrote a Spider-Man where he has a newspaper in his hand. Um, and yet we can hear now, I'm kind of, I am still upset about this and it's, it's really, really tragic what has happened. And it's, it's, it's a really sad time for, for fans of, of the character. I see that buttered toast. Your tweet was messed up. And again, in no way I meant for, not the tweet that I just read, for those of you who still don't know what's going on if you don't use Twitter, not that tweet that I just read. That was the first tweet, by the way, if you guys are still wondering, this was the first tweet that I posted in this long line of tweets, and I retweeted almost a lot of people um, sharing their 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 sympathy for Steve and their 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 feelings for Steve, and how much he meant to them and to the world and to the comic industry and to the world of superheroes. We're all dealing with this in our own way. People grieve in different ways. People feel emotions differently from others. When it comes to dealing with 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 death, with um, loss, uh, it's a it's a hard subject to deal with. And I understand if the tweet that I will read soon um, came off as disrespectful, disgusting, rude. I'm sorry if it did, and if I did manage to hurt anybody in that process of tweeting what I tweeted, I apologize. But basically, I'll just get to what I posted now. Um, so before I went to bed last night, after seeing um, uh, the the news of of Steve passing, I I, I just wanted to kind of lift everyone's spirits because I saw people saying stuff like, "Well, my dad passed away today, and now Steve's gone too. I guess there's no other reason to live anymore." Like I literally saw some type of tweet saying something like that, and it's just really, it 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 made me like sad and obviously more sad than seeing Steve pass, but having people actually say that the loss of this amazing person, of, of what he's done for the world, what he's done for so many fans, how he's impacted that many people, and seeing how someone basically said in the lines of, I don't want to live anymore because Steve's gone, that truly made me sad. And it, it, I, I just want to try and lift everyone's spirits. Like right there, V Nation official says, I couldn't stop crying. I you know, honestly, I'm, I'm starting to cry right now because it's a really sad time. Um, and, you know, I guess it's just really, you know, tragic what happened. But the, again, we have to look on the up and up. It's terrible what happened. It's I'm again, the more I talk about it, the more upset I feel. And that's a feeling I don't really like to experience that much because it doesn't make me feel all that, you know, it doesn't make my my heart feel in, the, in a place it wants to be, feeling in a sad place, feeling in a place that makes me feel like there's nothing more in this world. I don't like feeling that way. So what I try to do, not just for fans or for pu publicity, but for myself, just trying to lift people's spirits with any way possible and try and share my you know, my thoughts with other people in a way that can hopefully make other people happy or just less upset with what this news is. And just, you know, dealing with this now, seeing what it is, I'm, I'm still heartbroken about it. But basically, if you still don't know what I'm talking about, after that tweet, yes, Sonic, the freedom fighter, you're right, no one deserves to die. No one does, exactly, which is why, again, I mean, losing Steve is something that's super, that's extremely tragic. And he was an icon to so many, an inspiration to everyone, and especially someone like me who just grew up with this character, with Spider-Man, and how, how, how many people look up to this amazing, amazing creator who gave us so much, who, who inspired so many, and who did so much for the world. It's tragic. But again, the sad thing is, is that he's, he was 90, and I'm not sure if he had any type of um, disease or anything like that, or, or sickness that made his, his situation worse. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's really heartbreaking to see someone like that go. But the, what we have to look on the, on the positive side is that he had a long, prosperous life. He was loved by all you guys, by so many fans and people who would kill for the chance to just meet him, would, would, would love the opportunity to meet him. I sadly never got to meet Steve Dicko. 
I, I never knew him personally. I, I, you know, I've never met him or his family, but just the work that he's done has inspired me to be who I am today, loving Spider-Man, this character that is so inspirational for me and what he means to my life. And without Steve or Stan, obviously, I mean, I wouldn't even be doing this video right now and I wouldn't even have a, a channel to talk to you guys about this type of stuff. So basically what I'm trying to get at is, is a post that I posted before I went to bed last night after the, the sad news. Uh, so Matt007, so what did I do wrong? I'm about to say it right now. So again, in a tweet that I posted, this is a tweet that I posted. You can probably find it uh, somewhere. I, I re-quoted my tweet uh, earlier. So if you go on my Twitter page, you'll probably find it. Um, and I'm also, you know, like sick too. Like, you know, I don't feel so well either. Like, you know, allergies and stuff like that. So also this makes the situation worse. So basically what I did is that in order to try and lift people's spirits, try and look on the positive side of things, try and keep a positive attitude, even with this sad news, even with people grieving, I tried to just try and lift people's spirits, try and try and look on the bright side. And what I said was relating to, of course, Spider-Man PS4, the game that comes out in, uh, at the time of this recording, at the time when I posted the tweet, exactly two months because it is july 7th 2018 uh in exactly two months on september 7th 2018 the game will be released and it's a game that again some people could you could view it and i've seen this on twitter and i will read some people's tweets like how dare you post this to advertise a game it's a game it's nothing and again if you guys have been with the channel uh ever since 2016 or ever since whenever you discovered me uh, most likely a lot, a lot of people discovered me in 2017 You'll know how much Spider-Man means to me, how much this game means to me, what what I've done with my my life actually because I left college after I spent a full uh, year in college. I decided, you know what, college is fine. It's not for me. I want to pursue YouTube and focus on discussing about this game that I I really care about because this game means so much to so many people because Spider-Man inspires people and the work that Marvel and Insomniac and Sony are doing with this project is something that I see everything just saying yes this is this is the Spider-Man gaming experience that we've all been waiting for and this tweet was just trying to look on the bright side uh you know really look even though sadly we lost someone amazing, we lost an incredible talent, he inspired so many people. His work is heavily inspired within this game. And that's what I was trying to look at. So what I posted, if you're still wondering, I said, to, to quote, exactly quote, I said, even though the loss of Steve Ditko is a heartbreaking one, there is a bright side. Now I do understand why that may seem like a bright side to someone dying, what are you, freaking? lunatic you psychopath you disgusting freak i understand and i highly apologize if that came off that way there's no words for me to describe why i quoted it in that specific way but there's no amount of things i can say that 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 can try and justify what i did because i do understand why it sounds wrong and i didn't mean it to sound that way so basically the, the full tweet says even though the loss of Steve Ditko is a heartbreaking one, there is a bright side. Spider-Man PS4 officially releases in exactly two months. Everyone in the Spy Squad knows you'll do Steve proud. Marvel Games at Insomniac Games. And then I use the hashtags. Hashtag Insomniac We Trust. Hashtag Be Greater. And hashtag Rip Steve Ditko. So I understand why people think... I'm trying to advertise a game. First off, I don't work for Insomniac Games. I don't work for Sony. I don't work for Marvel. I don't work for any of these companies. I was just able to talk to all of them, be able to interact with them on Twitter, interact with them at E3 in person, at GDC in March, at PSX in 2017. I was able to finally meet these people that I'm inspired by making this game that I care about so much and the creativity and the inspiration that they give everyone in the Spy Squad, specifically myself, because of how much I, I care about this game, the people working on it, what they mean for fans of the character who are new. You have to understand also, on, a, on the broader scope of things, it's crazy to think about this, but Spider-Man PS4 could possibly be someone's first ever experience 
of Spider-Man. Spider-Man PS4 could be someone's first ever introduction to the character. I know that sounds crazy, I know that sounds insane, but you do have to look at it from that perspective is that sometimes when, you know, when a gamer is new to the gaming world, they've never even seen Spider-Man before, like a younger gamer, like someone in middle school or elementary school or what have you, they've never played any game before on another console because uh, in today's standards, the PS2, PS3, Xbox 360, first Xbox, they're considered older consoles. So these new generations of gamers could actually be experienced to this character of Spider-Man for the very first time with this game. And that's what I've always had in my mind going into this game ever since 2016, is that this could be someone's first time being experienced, being exposed to Spider-Man, to this character that means so much to so many, how much he's inspired all of you, how much he's heavily inspired me, and it's just so heartbreaking and tragic that we've lost someone who has such a, had a, a, a huge impact within people's lives and specifically co-created all these amazing characters that people actually look up to as real life role models. People say, I wanna grow up like Peter Parker. I wanna grow up like Stephen Strange. I wanna grow up to be like Uncle Ben. You know, these characters that they've created in the past and, and it's just so heartbreaking to see that people think that I'm trying to disrespect Steve in any way by what I said. That being said, again, I see people saying that they want me to delete the tweet. And from my personal beliefs, from what I just finished explaining, I think that this is a game that, again, will change lives. It's just a game. It's not real. It's a product. I understand what you guys are saying. But think of it from my perspective. Someone who has literally spent two years of, of his life just not thinking that I'll be able to do YouTube as a as a career and, and just being able to share the love that I have for this character with you guys and the positivity that it brings us daily is something that I, I want to keep having happen. And and it's just, I, I, I understand why that tweet might, up, uh, might upset people with, the, I guess, the way I worded it, saying, with his death, there's a bright side. I in no way meant to say, oh, he died, so that way it's a good thing. No, I'm saying that it's so terrible that he passed away. There's no way, there's no words I can describe by how, what a tragic loss it is that we've, that Steve Ditko is gone. and But sadly, he's not coming back. I'm, I'm sorry, but I have to be blunt with some of you guys out there who, who are still offended by this tweet because I'm actually standing up for what I believe in and what my personal beliefs are. I see tons of people. Let me read the comments right now. There's comments in this tweet that, that totally uh, I understand with, and then there's other ones that just are trying to portray what I said in a bad light. So Brian at Brian Gaming 64 says, Evan, I'm not going to be harsh about it, but this is kind of disrespectful. Completely understand. I totally get it why you would think that. But again, that was not my intention at all. I'm just trying to look on the on the positive side of things and try and just, you know, try and make the best out of a bad situation. That's all I'm trying to do. Uh, Max Long says, Evan, I'm not, uh, I'm really not meaning this. He said meeting, but I think he meant meaning. Uh, it's a typo. Evan, I'm not really meaning this in a hateful way at all, but please delete this tweet. So as you can see, some people uh, want me to delete this tweet. Um, Bonnie Knight at Pet Shop Cower says, that ad placement was distasteful. Don't use someone who died as your hook to go, oh yeah, but this game, guys. So, um, HGL agent, how did Steve Ditko die? I think it's still being talked about um, in an article. Um, and I'll leave it in the description after this tweet, uh, after this uh, live stream is done. Um, but I think he just passed away in his sleep. Peacefully. No um, heartache or anything straining his body or anything like that. Just simply, uh, you know, passed away in a peaceful way. Um, or what Ronnie Pugs is saying is that he ha uh, had a heart attack. Um, so, you know... Um, according to comicbook.com. Um, so yeah, again, um, to continue with, and I didn't know that, see, so I'm just discovering that now that now that he, uh, passed away from a heart attack and that's really saddening to hear. And again, really, 
again, I, I don't like to grieve. It's a feeling that I don't feel personally well with myself feeling this way because it makes me sad and it makes my emotions upset. My entirety of my, my whole feeling now is upset. It's depressed. It's in a, in, a, in a hole that I can't come back out of. That's how I do not like to feel. And I understand people are grieving. They're taking heavy, heavy hits from Steve's loss. Absolutely understandable. I'm in no way taking away your own personal grieving feelings. I'm in no way telling you to feel, oh, Steve's gone, so you better get hyped for Spider-Man PS4. I'm in no way whatsoever trying to take away your feelings about Steve's passing and try and shape them into something else. I'm no way trying to make you feel another way that you should. I'm just simply saying how I feel in the best way possible. And I saw Squidward chat saying, please delete the tweet. You know, maybe, again, but I, I don't know. Uh, like I just finished explaining Squidward chat, if you just saw what I said, is that I'm no way trying to have anyone feel a different way. I'm in no way trying to make people feel that they, that they need to get excited for the game. Uh, all I was trying to do and all I'm trying to do now is to share with you what an amazing, incredible, wonderful man Steve was. He inspired billions of people. Not millions, not hundreds of thousands, not, not some people, the world. Billions of people with the characters he created. He inspired countless to actually pursue their life in a way that they never would have before without Steve's work. Steve is a legend. He is a hero that has saved millions to billions of lives of just actually being able to share what he did with this amazing character and share that with everyone. I, I know that what I posted in that way sounds like it was bad. Armpit or Armit Mahij, I'm trying to rationalize what I did. Again, I understand why you might think that. I, I, I completely understand. I'm in no way trying to say, I'm right, you're wrong. Again, I'm not. I'm just trying to tell you where I'm coming from. And I'm sorry if it offended anyone. If it, if it continues to offend people, I might just delete it, sure. But I'm just trying to share with you guys what I was trying to do. Um, to continue, um, Dead, at Dead Gunshot, said, Evan, this is really disrespectful. You shouldn't use the loss of someone's life to advertise a game. Again, I don't work for these companies. I'm just simply sharing my enthusiasm and passion for this character that just so happens to be in a game with everyone else who's who's dealing with the sad loss of a legend. And and while it is tragic, it's it's terrible. I'm just trying to share with you guys why there's something to look forward to. Like I said previously, if you're, if you're listening to me for the first time, someone said that their dad passed away the same day Steve Ditko passed away, and in so, that made them want to commit suicide. So that is a, is a, is a tweet that I sadly looked at and said, wow, this is really, really serious. This is actually serious that someone is considering to take their own life because someone in, in passing is gone. So that's like the same thing. I don't want to say it. I'm not trying to jinx it. But if Stan Lee goes, not saying he ever will, but when that day comes, I'm not sure what people are going to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do when that day comes, if that day comes. But it's, it's just, it's a tragic situation. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a non-avoidable situation that can't be overlooked. And what I did in, in trying to, 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 share, to spread positivity within a, a, a depressing amount of grieving. Uh, understandably so though, someone that people love is gone. I understand. This is a guy who has done so much for us and he has passed. Uh, with Ronnie Pugs, what he's saying, if you don't know, I believe he passed from a heart attack at the age of 90. But again, like I said, people grieve in different ways. People deal with death 
in their own ways. Some people even deal with death through humor. Some people deal with death through excitement. Some people deal with death by crying the entire day and not doing anything and just not wanting to do anything. People share their feelings in different ways from each other. I can't force anyone to feel a certain way because I don't want to and I never tried to and I'm not trying to now. All I was doing was trying to make the best out of a bad situation and I'm still not trying to justify myself. I'm just so honored that someone like Steve has given us so much and that I'm, I was able to experience this character through his eyes, through his work, through his art, through his writing. And just seeing how he's gone now is something that is truly heartbreaking. And, and what I, I understand now why, why what I posted, and again, I, I still see some people saying, what did I post? What did I do? Why are you apologizing? So I will read it again just to double clarify. Even though the loss, this is what I posted after. So again, first off though, two things is, like I said, I posted two separate tweets. One, acknowledging Steve's passing in my own way, in my own thoughts, in my own words, what he means to me. And I said, Steve Ditko was more than just an artist and a writer. He was a hero. He inspired the world with his work, helping create one of the greatest superheroes ever made and quite possibly the greatest fictional character of all time. I'll miss you, Steve. Thank you for everything. And after that tweet, I posted four pictures, two of which of Steve working at his workbench, creating these characters. The, the third picture of Steve in a comic book art form, sleeping. And the fourth one of Spider-Man in a really famous comic book panel holding a newspaper and basically uh, sharing what Spider-Man is. He is a hero that stands for good and inspires countless others to not give up. That's what this panel says. And basically in the panel it says, and that means Spider-Man is going into action again. I'll fight as long as I've ever, I've never fought before. Nothing will stop me now. For I know at last that a man can't change his destiny. And I was born to be Spider-Man. We told you this tale would be different, didn't we? So as far, so far as we know, it's the first time in history that an adventure hero had no actual fight with any foe. But now that respite is over, next ish will feature Spider-Man fighting as only he can. So get those webs untangled and be with us when Spidey shows the whole wide world what he's really made of. I think that's such an amazingly famous comic book panel of Spider-Man. Basically what it's trying to do is say, be you, be who you are, embrace yourself, embrace your own living, your own life, embrace your talents and seize the day. That's what that panel is saying. And that's why it's so impactful and so inspirational for me, for people who look up to Steve, for people who care about what he did, for people who loved his work, for people who are actually inspired by his actual life and what he gave to us as his gift to humanity, it's nothing to be taken lightly. So I understand what I may have posted may have been upsetting, disrespectful, disgusting, evil, and downright mal mal malicious, if that makes sense. But again, if it's upsetting you that much, I will delete it because I don't care about views. I don't care about public acknowledgement. I don't, I'm not trying to advertise for a company that I don't work for. I'm trying to share in a positive way as best as possible for people who are dealing with Steve's loss with extreme grief, depression, sadness, upsetting feelings in a way that has never been seen before with anyone else. I, I, the most uh, thing I can relate it to is Adam West. I love Adam West. And when he passed, it was one of the saddest days of my life. I grew up with my dad. My dad grew up with Adam West. And he, and therefore, when doing so, being exposed to that version of Batman, the uh, 1966 uh, Batman show, my dad grew up on that. And then he then passed that down to me as his way of saying, look how cool this character is. This is what I grew up with. And we share different generations of Batman because of someone amazing as Adam West. Uh, I grew up with the Christian Bale, Dark Knight Batman, and uh, the uh, Arkham Games Batman, and the 90s uh, cartoon Batman. Um, 
my dad, though, he grew up with the 60s Batman, uh, Adam West. And when he passed, it was an extremely sad day. But you know what we did when he passed? Even though my dad grew up with Adam West, he was a kid watching Adam West on TV be Batman. Even in that classy, super funny looking costume with the cloth, with the, the you know, the mask and the drawn eyebrows, my dad, in doing so, after hearing that Adam West passed, you know what he did? He watched the entirety of the Batman show. He has all, he has a box set of Batman DVDs that I gave to him for his birthday. And in that, when, when we heard the news that Adam West passed, we didn't, we obviously were upset about it and, you know, some, you know, upset emotions, but we never cried. We didn't know Adam West personally. He was an inspiration for so many people who love Batman. But I, I never knew Adam personally, and I never got the chance to say hi to, hi to him at a, at a con or whatever, because at the time, I was focusing on college. I never, I never knew I would be doing YouTube. I never knew I would be going to conventions and stuff like that. So I never sadly got to meet Adam West in person. But after Adam's passing, my dad and I just binged the entire 1966 Batman show. And we laughed. We had fun. We loved what Adam did for the character. And he meant the world to so many Batman fans. This is the same thing what's going on with Steve Ditko. He created a character that has inspired countless people loving what he's done for everyone. And all I was trying to do, again, see, this is what I'm saying. People are still wondering, what did I tweet? Uh, again, go back and you'll see, or just go on my Twitter and you'll see what I posted. If it's malicious, disgusting, evil, nothing in my whole life I would ever do something like that in any way to hurt anyone's feelings about anyone that feels super passionate towards Steve Ditko. I'm in no way forcing you to have an opinion different than mine about a man who has saved people with his work. That's how inspirational Steve Ditko is. That's how much he means to me. And the reason why I'm saying this right now is to try and just show why it, it pains me to see what people are saying still in the comments right now that I'm disgusting for posting an advertisement pretty much for Steve Ditko, uh, for Spider-Man PS4 uh, bandwagoning off of Steve Ditko. No, 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 no. If anything, if anything, Spider-Man PS4 is bandwagoning off Steve Ditko. Without him, this game wouldn't exist. Without him, Insomniac wouldn't even be doing this game right now. Without him, Marvel games wouldn't exist. Without him, Marvel wouldn't exist as we know it today. And while it is a tragic, super, super sad loss that Steve Ditko is gone, as you can see, instead of feeling upset about it, I am upset about it, but instead of crying about it, I'm actually a little bit mad right now because of people actually claiming that I'm a fraud. I'm a fake. I'm a liar. I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I don't know. Someone said something else. Just basically trying to say that I am the scum of the earth trying to advertise a product rather than respecting someone's life. No, 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 no. That hurt me more than anything else. And I don't know if they're like what Mr. Part just said, don't listen to the trolls. I don't know if they're trolling. I don't know if they're, if they are actually legitimately honest with what they mean. And I see right now in the comments, delete the tweet. Don't delete the tweet. If it's causing this much pain, then I might just delete it. But what I'm trying to say is that I'm, not trying to spread any other feelings than what you should for your own personal way of grieving. Again, like I said, if you didn't listen to what I just said, people grieve in different ways. People experience loss and deal with loss in different ways. So I just understand where you're coming from is all I'm trying to say. And more people, uh, in the comments of my tweet, I'm replying to my tweet. Um, let me see. I understand being excited for a game to an extent. Uh, this comes from Rabid Rocky at Kyrian Amples. However, briefly talking about a death, then promoting a game is in really bad taste. I don't care what your intentions were because it still left a bad taste in my mouth. And as I can see, many others. And he's absolutely right. Uh, again, even though I didn't mean any 
one to get hurt by this. I'm just saying that I'm trying to show you and share with you how I'm personally feeling about the situation. And again, to reiterate it for the third time, I said to quote after, after, which a lot of people are trying to not say, after I spent an entire tweet sharing my passion for Steve Ditko, what he means to me, how he inspired me, how I wouldn't be here without him. After that, then I posted this, and yet people are seeming like, oh, I'm just caring about the game and not Steve. No. But again, if it is causing this much trouble, which it clearly is, and since we're live right now, I will delete it. Although I will repost what I said previously um, about the tweet. And I, I followed up with an apology on Twitter, which is sincere, but again, it's a tweet. It's not actually coming from me, so I understand. But I said, after I see how much backlash it got... Uh, I see it says, or I said on Twitter after applying it, I in no way meant for this tweet to be disrespectful in any way to Steve Ditko. I was simply trying to make the best out of a sad situation. I love Steve with all my heart and he inspired me to be who I am today. I just wanted to stay positive as much as possible. Because again, we all deal with loss differently. I heavily apologize if I in any way offended or upset anyone that feels that I disrespected Steve Ditko by my tweet. It pains me to see people torn by what I posted. I didn't mean to hurt anyone. Hopefully, you'll find it in your hearts to forgive me. And again, I'm not saying you better forgive me right now. I'm in no way saying that. Um, and you can, you can hate me uh, as much as you want. You can claim that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a fraud. Um, uh, I see someone right now saying I'm Logan Paul, uh, that hurts, but again, I'm not trying to come off as a liar, as a scumbag, as someone who only cares about the product. I'm in no way trying to make you feel a certain way. And it pains me to see people so upset about this. It really does. And I, I... I understand that this is a, is, a, is a serious time that people are grieving in their own ways. And I'm not trying to interfere with that process of grieving. So when that happens and when I see stuff like this, I, 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 just, I just, I don't know what to do. And all I can ask uh, for what is happening is that I'm sorry. I in no way meant to hurt anybody. I miss Steve Ditko. And I'm just personally taking it with uh, a heart of air. And what that means pretty much is that instead of a heavy heart, basically, for example, um, the closest thing that I can feel what I'm feeling now is when my dog died. My dog, Corky, when I was in high school. And what I was doing is that in high school, I uh, was basically doing a project for my freshman year. And uh, my mom was calling me uh, to come back home because I had to go home and take care of my grandmother, who was right in the next room with me, um, because at my house, I take care of the entirety of the house and my uh, sick grandmother. Um, and also, when I was in high school, I had a little dog, a Yorkshire poodle named Corky, and she was my best friend. She was the sweetest, and she was getting older when I was starting high school because I got her when, she, uh, when I was in uh, elementary school. And... What, what happened is that I had a project to do for freshman year. My mom called me saying, you should get home right now. There's something going on. And I said, I can't right now. I'm working on a project with my, uh, you know, my, my co, my co-students, my coworkers, you know, my, my partners for the project. Cause you know, they make you partner up with people's, uh, assignments for school. And then I stayed at a friend's house to work on this project, to turn in, to get a good grade. And in doing so, I then came back the next day to my house, seeing that my dog had passed away without me being there for her. And when she was getting older, she needed some help walking around the house. She was a smaller dog, like about, you know, this big, not a huge dog, like this big of a dog. She passed away without me being there to even say goodbye or even be next to her when she passed away. That was probably the saddest I've ever felt in my entire life. And in doing so, I cried and, you know, gotten fights with people at school afterwards because of how upset I was. I couldn't deal with the, the sadness that it was bringing me because it was 
pretty much my best friend was my dog. I did have friends in school, but I was also picked on at school. And when I got home every, t every day from school, I always would see my dog, spend time with Corky, play with her, pet her, hold her, even have her next to me when I do homework. And when she passed away, it was one of the most saddest feelings of my life that I could ever feel in my, in my entire existence. And I promised to myself I would never uh, eggnog. I don't know if you're joking or not, but this is actually a serious conversation. Did I win the fight? No. I got my ass kicked because it was someone that was bullying me and he was bigger than me and I just couldn't take it anymore. So I decided to just sock him on the face, but then he just, uh, you know, beat the shit out of me. So no, I didn't win the fight. In fact, I got a black eye, but then I got back home and my dog was still gone. And in doing so, I realized, hey, feeling this way isn't getting anywhere. If anything, I'm feeling worse. I had a wonderful, wonderful life with my dog. My dog, Corky, was one of the sweetest beings in the universe. And seeing her pass away, actually not seeing her pass away, is one of the entire things that made me promise to myself I'm never going to feel this way again because I was in a dark place that I felt that I could not get out of because of the things that I did when I was upset, when I felt depressed, when I felt like there was no escape with the loss that I was feeling. And instead, I looked on the bright side. You said, you know what? I had a wonderful life with my dog. I still have my dad. I still have my grandmother. I still have my mother. I still have some friends and I still have my brain and my heart. And I, I'm, I'm healthy. I don't have anything wrong with me. That's all I can ask for. I'm looking at what I believe are the pluses in life, the positives, the upsides. I understand that people have this connection to Steve Ditko, that people in their life feel like Steve Ditko saved them with his work. Absolutely. I feel that same way too. But some of people out there, some of you guys, some of these people on Twitter, it's in all honesty, you've never met Steve Ditko. You've never met him in person. You've never were in his family. You were just inspired by this character that he created. Ab uh, totally fine. Absolutely fine. But saying that um, Steve Ditko was like a father to you, when, when in all reality you never met him, is is where I'm trying is what I'm trying to just say. The pro gamer, I never knew about him. That just so goes to show right there. The pro gamer just said, I never knew who Steve Ditko was. And yet he's the co-creator of one of the most inspirational and most motivational characters in all of fiction. And pro gamer just said in all of his entire existence, he never knew who he was. So that just shows right there. And all I'm trying to do is that I love Steve Ditko. I'm thankful for what he has done for my life. I would not be where I am today without him. And I could not be even more thankful for what joy he has brought to me and to the rest of the Marvel community and the comic book community as a whole. Creating characters like Spider-Man, uh, Doctor Strange, The Question. Just, he's an icon. He will be ever lived in people's hearts and be loved throughout multiple generations. I understand what I posted that it may seem malicious. I completely get it. But I in no way meant it to be so. And someone just said right there, I recommend you stop talking. Again, I'm not trying to make you... F no in this entire live stream, I've never tried to make you feel a different way. I've already repeated myself enough. But all I'm trying to say is that I, I'm grieving for his loss in my own way. And I'm just trying to tell you guys where I'm coming from. And again, for what I posted, what I said, what I did, I apologize. No way did I mean to disrespect Steve at all. So in doing so, since we are live, I'm going to now answer your questions about what my intents are or all that. And I'm trying to make up for my mistake. And also now I will delete the tweet and repost what I said, trying to forgive or ask you for forgiveness for what I said. So since it's clearly causing so much trouble, I'm now going to, and since some of you guys don't even know what I'm talking about because some of you either don't have Twitter, don't care, or didn't see it. So uh, I'm going to delete the tweet and listen to what you guys have to say. 
Um, Spidey Vlogs. Hey, whoa, what'd he say? Again, quickly look on my Twitter. For the last section, for the last, before, like the last five minutes, guys, before I do delete this, just look at my Twitter. See where I'm coming from. See where everyone else is coming from. Sharing their love for Steve. Sharing their passion. Sharing their life stories with Steve. And that's all I was trying to do. Is even though Steve's gone, I'm crushed. Emotionally. But he's gone. He's gone. I'm sorry if that has to get through to you guys. He's gone. He's not coming back, and I'm. it's sad to say, but some of you guys are saying let people grieve. Of course, but he's gone. Some people didn't even know he existed, let alone even met him in person. I never got the honor to meet Steve Ditko in person. I still, even ha uh, I still haven't even had the honor to meet Stan Lee in person at a Comic-Con. Just his personality, his being, his honesty, his go-getter attitude, and his his love for all things comic book related. That's why I love Stan Lee. And that's why I love Steve Ditko. And people are having this emotional attachment to him, acting like he was their second father or a close friend. When in reality, they either never knew about him or they never even met him in person. I understand completely. I get it. If you were to say something like, I met Steve at a Comic-Con, I got his autograph, and we talked for a while, and now he's gone, and I'm crushed about that, I absolutely get that. That's totally fine. I can't say I'm, I'm the most sad that Steve's gone because I've never met him. I never had the honor of meeting him, and I'm crushed that he's gone. But I'm just trying to say that even though this man of legends, this icon, this hero has passed. His memory will still be in here and in here, in our minds, in our hearts, and our souls because of how much he means to us, how much he means for the world, and how much he has done for everyone in love with superheroes in the world of comics. You can call me a fraud, a bigot, a hypocrite, whatever, I'm just trying to share with you the positive side. He's gone. I'm, there's no words, again. But we have to move on at some point. You can continue to grieve, it's fine, but eventually we have to move on. In some way, at some point in our lives, we have to move on. And, and guess what? It's not, not a marketing ploy. It's a fact. It is a legitimate fact that in exactly two months' time, a Spider-Man video game will release on September 7th because today is July 7th, and in exactly two months, that game will come out. That's not an advertisement ploy. That's not trying to promote a company. That's not trying to share with you that this game is more important than Steve. If anything, Steve is more important than this game. It's actually a legitimate 100% fact that this game is going to release in exactly two months. You could say it's an advertisement, but it's a fact. Same thing. I could have said the same thing about Into the Spider-Verse or the Venom movie. Or even Spider-Man Far From Home or the fourth Avengers movie where they're going to have Spider-Man in it. Oh, Steve Ditko passed. But on the bright side, Venom comes out in three months. Less than three months because it comes out on October 5th. Oh, Steve Ditko passed. But on the bright side, Into the Spider-Verse comes out in four months. Uh, actually, five months. In December, on Christmas. Those aren't advertisement, they're facts. It's a legitimate fact that this product will come out at a certain point in time just because someone passed. I understand why everyone's upset. And the title clearly says, I apologize. The title of this live stream clearly says, I apologize. I'm not asking for forgiveness because I'm standing by what I believe in. Although everyone is going hog wild about this tweet that I posted, and it's causing so much uproar in the community with Steve's passing that it would be best if I deleted it. Absolutely understand. And I will. But I'm still standing by the fact 
that the game that we all care about of this character that means so much to us is releasing in exactly two months. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's a fact. It's not an advertisement. It's not a cliche post. It's a legitimate fact. But I do understand that people grieve in their own ways. Some of you have, uh, may have dealt with loss in the past, maybe within your own family or something like this again. Same thing what I said. Adam West or Steve Ditko. We all deal with it in our own ways. And it's heartbreaking that he has gone, that he is gone. He will ever be lived on through our hearts and our souls. And in honoring his memory, this character will be shed in a new light when this game comes out that people could possibly look up to in the future. Or even uh, the MCU Spider-Man. People's first exposure to Spider-Man could have been either with the comics, a cartoon, a movie, or a game. And they are exposed to Steve Ditko's work because of these forms of media. This is showing a Spider-Man that is embracing the love, the lore, and the history of the greatness that was Steve Ditko. And the greatness that is Stan Lee. With this character that they made, with this hero that they made for us to enjoy, it is a moment that will be respected for Steve's memory. When this game comes out, showing a Spider-Man story that we haven't seen before in a really cool new way to honor Steve. New, new Spider-Man movie, honoring Steve. Anything related to Marvel, really, honoring Steve. Anything comic book related, honoring Steve. That's all I'm trying to say. And I see people right now, Logan Paul, all that. I get it. I understand, I guess, but I'm still just trying to say, I'm sorry if I offended anyone, I apologize. And in doing so, I will now delete the tweet to end this live stream and I guess just answer some of your questions that you may have about whatever it is. So I just want to copy and paste what I said, quoting the tweet, but I will delete the tweet. And again, I said, the last time, last time, if anyone is wondering, last time, this is what I tweeted after I tweeted out my condolences to Steve Ditko. I said, even though the loss of Steve Ditko is a heartbreaking one, there is a bright side. Austin, the Spidey fans here, yes, he says, uh, people have been comparing me to Logan Paul. Uh, I don't know if you just joined the chat, Austin, but yes, people um, have been comparing me to Logan Paul. They've been calling me... Uh, scum of the earth. They've been saying that I am uh, not a real Spider-Man fan. They've been saying that I'm disgusting. Understandable though. It's a huge loss. And I highly apologize for people who are grieving. But I in no way meant for my uh, tweet and my words to uh, hurt anyone in the process. And for that, I'm sorry. So let me just read the, the tweet that I posted after I put out my condolences to Steve Ditko's passing. Let me read that delete it since it's causing so much trouble, and then I will go and repost what I quoted my tweet with. So I said, to quote myself, even though the loss of Steve Ditko is a heartbreaking one, there is a bright side. Spider-Man PS4 officially releases in exactly two months. Everyone in the Spidey Squad knows you'll do Steve proud at Marvel Games and at Insomniac Games. Hashtag in Insomniac we trust, hashtag be greater, hashtag rip Steve Ditko. That last one, I understand why it might be some um, upsetting stuff, because hashtags are known to be kind of, you know, uh, uh, overused um, or kind of um, overplayed. But I just wanted to say sorry about that. I didn't mean for any of that to happen. I had no idea that this tweet would get so much backlash. And in the process, I've seen people basically just say I'm the worst and that I don't deserve uh, to have met uh, the people at Insomniac Games uh, who's working on Spider-Man because of what I said. Because I'm just uh, a marketing Sony Pony 
cocksucking fanboy for people, apparently. But again, like uh, Arachnine Notion said, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Absolutely. Without Steve, I wouldn't be where I am today. So with that, once again, I apologize, and I will now delete the tweet because this is getting out of control. I don't like seeing an uproar with the community. Hopefully for you guys who have um, uh, been here throughout this entire live stream can hopefully try and see where I'm coming from and try and uh, tell that to other people who uh, have not been able to see the stream. So right now, again, I'm deleting my tweet, but I'm going to copy what I replied with my tweet. So let me just see really quickly because I want to make sure that I don't lose what I said because I want to say it exactly the same. Really quickly here. All right. So I'm on Twitter. Here's my tweet one last time again. Even though the loss of Steve Ditko is a heartbreaking one. There is a bright side, just like with anyone passing, not just with Steve, with anyone. For example, if my grandmother passes away, I will probably cry until I can't cry anymore. I will be forever shifted in how I feel about the world when she passes because she is someone who I have lived with ever since I grew up. Someone who has cared for me ever since I was young. And I'm not sure how I'm going to take her loss if that happens. But we all deal with grief in our own ways. Steve Ditko was a legend. His memory is not something to be tainted with. And I was in no way trying to misinterpret or misjudge or shift his passing as to something to market a game. At the end of the day, it's a game. But it's also something more, is what you have to understand. For people like me and for other people who are really looking forward to this game, it's, it's, something, it's something else. So right now, deleting the tweet. Someone just said divided, I guess. But again, watch the entire live stream and you'll understand where I'm coming from. So tweet, deleted. There it is. And right now, Bill Roseman tweeted out an hour ago, the greatest superhero moment of all time. Spider-Man comes of age, earning a form of redemption for the death of his Uncle Ben by lifting this unbearable weight, all of his guilt, fighting to save his Aunt May. Power, responsibility, triumph. Truly transcendent, rip Steve Ditko. He's honoring Steve's memory with a comic that he uh, drew and wrote for. Perfect. All I was doing was trying to do something that is trying to be uplifting. I see someone said screenshotted. Again, How I'm not trying to come off as someone that is hiding what I did. You could screenshot the tweet. I'm not sure what's, what's wrong with it. You, you screenshotted a tweet that has no malicious intent whatsoever. And I deleted it because I don't want to see people fight over words that might be misinterpreted in some way. Okay. Excellent. So, I'm now reposting stuff. Let me see, because I deleted the tweet, so I want to see how that uh, affected the other tweets that I posted. Okay, well, it's actually still there. I deleted the tweet, but my post is still there. So, sure. But basically, as long as that's gone now, hopefully you guys can respect where I'm coming from and understand what I meant. So, I, I'm not sure what else to say, guys. I mean, I'll answer your questions. I see some of you still saying that you're a scum. Uh, you don't deserve to be a Spider-Man fan. Uh, you're evil. Okay. But I'm just wanting to try and see what I can do to make best out of this situation. Because again, like I've said, I still believe in what I said. 
Even though I deleted that tweet just now, it's because I don't want to see people continue to fight. I deleted it because I don't want to see people hurt themselves or hurt others because of something that I said, just trying to be on a positive note. But if there's anything I can do to make it um, better or just redeem myself or whatever, if I can uh, be forgiven in any way from you guys, um, sure. I'd be more than happy to. Even though this stream has been going on for an hour, um, I'll still stay here as long as it takes until I can make this right. Because a lot of people, um, someone said it's not that big of a deal. It kind of is. Like I just said, someone was willing to commit suicide over the passing of Steve Ditko because they said that there's nothing else to live for. Clearly, it's a big deal. And clearly, people are still distraught over this. So, it is a pretty big deal for some people. So, and I'm in no way trying to say, get hyped for Spider-Man PS4 because Steve Ditko passed. No. I'm saying he's being honored through the work that Insomniac Games is doing with this, with this game. With this awesome, awesome game that we are lucky enough to play in about, in exactly two months. Although I am sorry. So, with that said though, let me see what you guys have to say. So apparently you're a bad person because I'm excited for Spider-Man PS4. Exactly. spider is divided. Okay. S sorry about that. Um... Let's see, I, someone said, do I like Pogs? I'm not sure if you meant Porgs from Star Wars, but uh, if you did mean Porgs from Star Wars, no, they're weird. Pogs are something else. Um, Pogs are all right. What upcoming projects are you working on, says Mr. Part. So, I'm, uh, well, again, I mean, I'll answer it quickly, but um, Radioactive Replay for Enter Electro and... Radioactive Replay for Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction, and Radioactive Review for Spider-Man 2000. But, again, this is not about me right now. This is about Steve and the situation that we're in. Right there, Lela Lamorson, Scum of the Earth. Exactly. So, again, it, it pains me to see a comment like that, but I'm not going to let it get to me. And I'm sorry you feel that way, but I've done all I can to make the situation right. Um... So, I'm sorry. I highly apologize that you feel that way. Again, guys, I see questions. Are you going to play Spider-Man PS4? Are you going to watch Venom? This isn't about that right now. It's about Steve. It's about the situation that we're in that people are clearly saying that they're heartbroken over. And that they're, they, they believe that I'm uh, the worst being to have ever lived on this planet because of what I said. So it's not about that right now, it's about just trying to make this right. So if anything I can say or do, um, let me know. Spider-Roos, we understand, or united we stand. Uh, thank you, I guess. Do you think Spider-Man will be, what, I missed that, sorry. Something about, do I think Spider-Man will be with Steve or, shoot, I missed it again. Um, I'm sorry. I don't have it right now. My I have my phone live streaming this, but I need I should probably pull it up on my computer to read the comments and scroll back up. Um, let me see if it loads. Let me go back up. I'm scrolling back up in the comments. Um, favorite Steve Ditko story: Amazing Fantasy Fifteen. Obviously, where it all began. And also, if this be my destiny, of course. I mean, the artwork and the, the, the writing that was in that story is something that I don't think has personally ever been recreated in any other comic book and has actually been tried to be recreated and not done in a good way um, with the rubble scene, you know? Homecoming, for me personally, again, I like the movie, but what they did in that part, I think, is actually a disservice to Steve Ditko, where in that MCU version of Spider-Man, um, under the rubble, he's trapped. Vulture's about to get away and rob the Avengers jet plane. 
And then uh, Peter's trapped on the rubble. He's screaming in pain. He's screaming for help, crying. That was moving, I think, uh, with Tom Holland's acting. That was incredible. But then they had to kind of ruin the moment with it saying, um, uh, he, when he's he sees his reflection in the in the puddle, and then in his head he's thinking about Iron Man. Out of anyone in his life that he thinks about, the motivation to get him out of the rubble is a hero that I guess he looks up to because uh, Peter Parker was in Iron Man 2. He was the little kid with the Iron Man mask. But I think that's a disservice to that scene. I think it should have been he thought about Aunt May or even a perfect opportunity introduced the, the uh, MCU version of Uncle Ben because some people are thinking that because we haven't seen the quote-unquote full origin of the MCU Spider-Man, they think that this version of Spider-Man actually doesn't have an Uncle Ben because we haven't even heard him mention him once. I mean, he said uh, in Civil War, when you do the things that I can do and you don't, and then the bad things happen, they happen because of you. That was a great scene because it teased to the possibility of learning more about Uncle Ben in the future um, within Spider-Man Homecoming. But then they just kind of gloss over it slightly by saying, with everything Aunt May went through, I can't do that to her again because he's talking about Uncle Ben. I thought it was actually kind of messed up that he thought about Iron Man in that scene rather than Uncle Ben or Aunt May or even uh, Ned Leeds, his best friend in this universe or, I don't know, maybe a teacher that he looks up to or something, a professor of his or a teacher that he likes. He just thinks about Iron Man. I don't think that was a, a good representation of that scene, in my opinion. It was cool when he, uh, come on, Peter, come on, Spider-Man, and then he triumphantly lifts the debris off of him. But I still think it should have been a scene with connecting the family side of Peter, connecting what uh, Uncle Ben means or, 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 or Aunt May means to Peter's life. Uh, the woman who raised him, pretty much. The man who raised him. The man who taught him with great power comes great responsibility. And then instead, he thinks about Tony taking away his cool new suit. I thought that was a disservice to that scene that Steve Ditko perfectly portrayed in the comics in the movie. In my opinion, the scene... Don't get me wrong. The scene itself, lifting the rubble, the puddle, the reflection, that was all great. But I think the motivation on why he does it, thinking about Iron Man instead of... um. Uh, Aunt May or Uncle Ben is, I think, a wasted opportunity and, frankly, a disservice to Steve Ditko's work, in my opinion. So that was a great question, Ronnie. Great, great question. When was the first time you found out about Steve Ditko, says Miss the Part? Um, it's actually a good question. Uh, I think around after uh, Spider-Man 2 came out, because, again... I was a kid. I was a little kid when the first movie came out in 2002. I was four years old because I was born in 1998. I'm 20 years old right now. Um, and when that happened, uh, I was exposed to Spider-Man with the movie, and then I played the movie game. And then I played Spider-Man 2000, and then Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro. So I was all in the, in the movies and the games when I was a little kid in preschool. And then someone said, hey, did you know there's a book about him? Like, what do you mean? Like, oh, comics, because, of course, the movies are based off the comics. So when I saw it, I think the first one was, you know, the classic Amazing Fantasy 15, just like, you know, you know how they, like, they, like reprint those issues of uh, Steve Ditko's comics um, or something like that? You know, they kind of reiterate or republish the older comics to make it more modern. Uh, I think they redid that exact Steve Ditko story in another comic, and I just picked it up uh, when I also found out about Ultimate Spider-Man comics, and I was exposed to that, you know, Amazing Fantasy 15. Um, and it was great. Um, yeah, I think that was... And my dad, I think, got it for me, too. My dad uh, heavily loves Batman, but he also heavily loves Spider-Man. Um, and he, he got me those Ultimate Spider-Man comics and the old-school Steve Ditko comics. I sadly uh, don't have any here with me, um, but, uh, you know, the panel where he's just with uh, all the people around him uh, is great. and Or just the panel where, at the end, where he walks off and then he the, you see small Peter walking away on the, on the street and then giant Spider-Man is his, his reflection. Um, it was great. Josh, make you a mod. 
I thought I did. I guess I will do that again. Or I guess I will do that now, I should say. Um, there you go. Josh is now a moderator. Um, Victor Greenwood, what, what are you apologizing about? Watch the live stream when it uploads. You'll understand. Basically, I posted a tweet that some people are thinking I'm more caring about Spider-Man PS4 than I am about Steve Ditko, which hurt me, actually, when people said that. So, yeah. Mr. Park, could you be a mod? Of course. Of course. I never uh, really do this long of a live stream, so that's why it's a bit new for me to do this. But, yeah. Uh, of course you can be a mod. I think this ending would have been... I think this ending would have better... Wait, what? Mini Flick Studio says, I think this ending would have better representing Steve. I think he means ending the live stream. Again, yes, but I just want to kind of answer some people's questions if they're still thinking that I'm the scum of the earth. And that's all I'm trying to do. Um, let's see. Do you think Spider-Man will be same Luigi Petruno? I, I hope I'm saying your name right. I'm sorry if I'm not says, uh, do I think Spider-Man will be the same without Steve? Well, he, his work has continued to inspire comics today. So in all reality, as long as you yourself keep thinking about Steve Ditko and as long as the comic industry still honors his memory with his work that he did for this character and all these other awesome characters, he's still going to be a part of all of Spider-Man's media. I mean, that's the best way we can honor him is continuing what he did by honoring his work, by continuing these awesome Spider-Man stories, which is exactly what I tried to do with the tweet by saying that I think Spider-Man PS4 will continue to honor Steve's memory with a great story representing Steve's work in some way. And hopefully they all, I saw uh, is amazing um, say that on his Twitter, like hopefully they they have at the end of the game saying uh, in memory of Steve Ditko. I really hope they have that too. Um, yeah, Comic Man, what happened? Why am I apologizing? Just watch the, the uh, you know, live stream again. You'll see. Um, missed the part. Did the hospital that kept Steve didn't want to tell people that he passed? Did he pass away yesterday or last week? I think, so that's why I'm, I'm con uh, concerned about it too. And that's why I'm, I'm sadly not as fully uh, heartbroken as a lot of other people are is because I don't know the full story. I don't know what happened. Uh, apparently... It was reported yesterday that he passed. But apparently what these uh, articles are saying is that he actually passed about a week ago in a hospital from a heart attack. So that's kind of sketchy from these uh, websites hiding that from people. Why would you hide that? Why not re uh, report it uh, the first day? Uh, I guess to ease people into it better. But, you know... I guess it's the same thing like when uh, people found out that John Lennon uh, died or uh, Kurt Cobain, you know, big people within the music industry that people care about. Same thing. People look up to John Lennon. People look up to Kurt Cobain, um, but they never knew them personally. They never knew what they went through in their actual personal lives because Kurt Cobain committed suicide. Uh, John Lennon, though, you know, obviously not the same case, but with Kurt Cobain, you know, sad that that happens. Same thing with Robin Williams. Exactly the same thing with Robin Williams, one of my favorite comedians of all time, and he committed suicide. You know, so it's just, it's a sad, you never know what's going on with people's lives. I mean, Steve, he, he just lived a, a long, prosperous, great life, and he just happened to pass away at an old age. Completely different from the two situations I was just talking about, but it's the same thing. With that, you never know what's going on with people, and you never know them personally unless you're able to meet them in person. But, you know, it's just, it's sad to think about. And it's it's something that we don't take lightly, and it's something that I never tried to take in a lighthearted manner. And for that, I'm sorry. So, um, you know, guys, I, I just don't know what else to say. I'm, I'm, I'm more upset about the situation than you can understand. I know it doesn't look like it, but seeing how many people are, are, are distraught about this, are, are claiming that I tainted the memory of this man by what I posted, it breaks my heart. I never meant that to happen, and I never meant to come off that way. Um, and again, you'll see. I posted my own 
condolences and thoughts um, about 19 hours ago from the time of this recording. It says, Steve Ditko was more than just an artist and a writer. He was a hero. He inspired the world with his work, helping create one of the greatest superheroes ever made and quite possibly the greatest fictional character of all time. I'll miss you, Steve. Thank you for everything. I mean, what I, I don't know what else you want me to say. Um, I'm sorry. And I hope you can, uh, can forgive me. Uh, but anyways, guys, I think I've said all I have to say. I think I've said um, everything I can say. I, I'm not sure what else I can say at, at, uh, at this point. Um, just that I hope you know where I'm coming from. And I hope you can forgive me. That's all I ask. And for what I did, I apologize. If I caused any distraught, caused any uproar, caused any uh, disrespect within the, uh, the Spidey Squad community or the Spider-Man PS4 community, um, I'm sorry. But I just hope you understand where I'm coming from. But anyways, guys, I think that's the end of this stream. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. And um, I'll just see you next time. But anyways, guys, I'm sorry. And uh, I'll see you all later. And I'll be on Twitter, too, to... Uh, just manage what people are saying, you know, just see what, um, is going on with the community. So, uh, but anyways, guys, thank you. Uh, um, and please forgive me. Uh, and I don't, I don't expect you to, if you're still upset, but, um, just thank you for hearing me out. That's all I can ask. Um, but anyways, guys, thank you all. Um, goodbye. Have a good day and rest in peace, Steve Ditko.